Woke identity politics has no place in sports. Sports fans should be divided over team rivalries, not politics. I'm here to disrupt the biased sports media by bringing you stories, conversations, and perspectives you won't hear anywhere else. Today, I'm diving into my personal sports media journey, the history of how the left has infiltrated sports, and I'll explain how that affects us now. You'll also get my take on what we can do to combat the identity politics running rampant through sports. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Once again, welcome back to Breakaway, the center of sports counterculture. We're gonna give you the conversations and topics you don't hear anywhere else in sports media. Once again, I'm John Root. I'm the daily host of TPUSA Live from HQ in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm also gonna be your weekly host of this show right here, Breakaway. And right next to me, every single week, you're gonna see this guy, producer Brian. So Good glad to be here. here. So pumped, John, it's gonna be awesome. I think this show is gonna be fantastic because you don't see anyone else that's young like us in sports media that's unafraid and unfiltered and uncensored with this kind of stuff too because the left has just infiltrated sports. But for me, I've been involved in sports my entire life. Mm -hmm. My entire professional career, I started in minor league baseball, single A baseball, Rancho Cucamonga Quakes. Ooh. So my whole journey to, I was working my way up the minor league system just like the players do. So I was a host for them. Then I worked my way to minor league hockey. The San Jose Sharks minor league team moved out to San Jose, the San Jose Barracuda. I was a host and digital reporter for them. Then from there, I worked my way up to the Sharks. Halfway through that first season, they're like, this guy's got what it takes move on up. I was the in arena host for the San Jose Sharks and I was also their digital media host. But the worst part about these jobs was having to stay silent about my political beliefs. That's what was happening with conservatives in sports media. I had so many conversations with people consistently. They were like, I wish I could say this. Mm -hmm. I wish I could say yeah. that. I always felt like I could share my faith and I felt like that wasn't that controversial, but especially with the election in 2016, there was things I knew I could not say. If I wanted to make my way up all the way to that network level, there was no chance I could say that. That would be career suicide. But I think people would really like to hear a little bit more of a breakdown of you and what you do here at TPUSA and how you're gonna be involved every week. Yeah, you know, I'm a, coming at it from a little different perspective than, than you. You know, I wasn't a, a player. And actually, you know, growing up as a scrawny little kid I, with very low amounts of talent, I grew up loving professional sports. Mm -hmm. I remember very vividly, I was nine years old when Luis Gonzalez hit the single over the Yankees to yeah. win uh, the World Series. I mean, we all went nuts for that. Incredible I, moment. Oh my gosh, that moment was unreal. I mean, all the pitching with Kurt Schilling, I mm -hmm. love Kurt Schilling, and Randy Johnson, that series was great. But then also like, I remember going with my dad to the, to the 60th win the Suns had the season yeah. Nash came back. I've been a fan my entire life. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Love the Cardinals, love the Suns, love the Diamondbacks. But the reason why I'm sitting here with you today is in 2018, really early January 2018, I started traveling around the country with Charlie Kirk, going to universities with him. I was his cameraman. I was the one making sure that what he was saying on college campuses was being documented and then helping him get it out onto mm -hmm. social media. And it opened my eyes to how bad the culture is within within our youth, within high school students, college students, how bad it is the leftist mm -hmm. indoctrination of what's going on. And then, you know, a couple, flash forward a couple years, we started the Charlie Kirk Show podcast and I've been involved with the Charlie Kirk Show podcast since the first episode. So really, I'm just pumped that there are so many avenues here at Turning Point USA where we can fight the culture war. As the great late Andrew Breitbart said, politics is downstream from culture. So it's time for us to rally in the sports world. And you're a huge stats guy too. So every single week, I'm gonna bring up a lot of topics and this guy is gonna be the brain behind the computer too. You're gonna to get all the stats, all the good info from him. But another reason you know, why I'm here and why I decided to end that journey, the pandemic hit. Mm, so yeah. me and so many people in sports media just got decimated. The whole industry, you were trying to find jobs and I was one of the few that was very blessed to have an opportunity. So I was working for an online sports retailer and we were doing some live shows and I had a connection with them and cancel culture hit. I was out here in Arizona. I moved out of the Bay Area. Thank God I was oh out of there. Thank God I was Welcome. out of there. But uh, Governor Doug Ducey said that individuals and businesses could decide for themselves if they wanted to wear a mask. I was stoked to go to the gym and not have to wear a mask. <laughs> I never posted a gym mirror selfie, but I posted that. And that, that was the end. That opened up 
a crazy storm. The mob came after me and I eventually got canceled from my job because of that. People were tagging my employers and from there I think I had a pretty funny response. A lot of people were trying to make fun of my chicken legs and yeah. I feel like that's what you have to do in those moments. But in general, I said enough's enough. It's time for a young sports media professional to step up and talk about the things you don't hear anywhere else. And I feel like that's why this show is going to be so, so important. That's why I'm stoked to be right here with you every single week. I'm sure you're like me, John. You're probably in a bunch of different group chats and fantasy football leagues with a bunch of friends. I know me in particular, I have friends that I talk daily about sports with who don't think the same way I do politically. In fact, some of them, if it wasn't for sports, they would probably view me as the enemy. Yep. But we have that sports connection that unifies us, it humanizes sports us. Sports brings it, us together unlike anything absolutely. else. Absolutely. And it's just having that to fall back on, I think is such an important part of the American culture that we don't have to think about everything in the world of politics. Sometimes we can just be, you know, a couple dudes being guys watching a game. <laughs> a couple guys being dudes. <laughs> and that we're going to do that every single week. I'm so excited to be here talking about that sports used to be an outlet away from the craziness of politics and the world and life. It used to be a unifier. And we think really what we can do here is bring sports back to being a unifier. Coming up next, we're gonna give you a comprehensive breakdown of how the left has infiltrated sports. You aren't gonna see a comprehensive history like this anywhere else. We're gonna start in 2003, all the way back then when Rush Limbaugh got canceled. And then we're gonna move on up to Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the anthem and how we really feel like that was an inflection point in sports. I'm John Root and this is Breakaway. So you're probably asking, John, how did this happen? What's the history behind this? How did the left find its way into sports and infiltrate sports? So we're gonna give you a comprehensive breakdown of exactly how that happened. So we're gonna take you back all the way to 2003. Some of you might not have been born yet, but what happened, Brian? We had Rush Limbaugh, one of the most prominent radio show hosts in the entire country, mm -hmm. also huge NFL fan. So he was on ESPN NFL Countdown. He had the likes of Chris Berman, Steve Young, Michael Irvin, mm -hmm. and they decided to talk about Donovan McNabb and what was going on exactly with the Philadelphia Eagles, the leader there, and he decided to bring his race into it. Yeah, you know, I wasn't really the biggest fan of uh, Rush bringing race into it in the first place, but Rush wasn't wrong. He was actually spot on. Donovan McNabb was overrated in his career, and the media was the one really propping him up. Was that because he was black? I'm not willing to say that. Rush did, though, and he really had to pay the consequence of saying that. And we're going to have you guys judge for yourself, so we're going to check out that clip right now. Run that off. So, Rush, once you, once you make that investment, though, once you make that investment in him, that's a done deal. I'm saying it's a good investment. Don't misunderstand. I, I just don't think he's good, as everybody said he has been. Rush has a point. Why. Well, he Rush certainly has hasn't matured. Point. So, from there, we were just talking about that. Whether you agree with Rush mm -hmm. or not, I think it was a valid argument. You even had Michael Irvin just saying, hey, Rush has got a point. And probably the most egregious part about this whole clip is you have Steve Young saying, Coy Detmer might be a better option. Which than is Donovan a complete McNabb. joke. I mean, Coy Detmer, Mr. threw 10 touchdowns throughout his entire career. It, that's really indicative of the fact that people were doubting Don McNabb at that point. And how ESPN responded was the most telling of all this. So Mark, Mark Shapiro, VP of ESPN, here's what he had to say after there was backlash. Mm -hmm. He said, this is not a politically motivated comment. This is a sports and media argument. Rush was arguing McNabb is essentially overrated. We brought Rush in for no holds barred opinion. Yeah. So they had his back right away. But what happened three days later? Well, it, it's not exactly about what ESPN thought. There were multiple presidential candidates at the time who they went for the throat. They hated Rush because he was a conservative. Mm -hmm. I mean, r really think about this. Imagine if Charlie Kirk or Ben Shapiro was invited to be part of Inside the NBA Today. True. That's what it was like. Rush was on one of ESPN's biggest shows, the NFL Sunday Countdown. That's such a great way to put it, too, because this is putting it in perspective. Charlie, if you saw him on Inside the NBA, it would be, it would, people would blow up. Yeah, and so you had all these presidential candidates come for Rush and come for ESPN, and they demanded that ESPN let him go, and they forced him to resign. And what this means, too, is ESPN made the decision that is the best business model to stay away from politics. We're sticking to sports. 
didn't that last didn't, long. That didn't last very long. So what you had is you had a brand new president jump into ESPN, Bob Iger. Mm -hmm. Crazy leftist Bob Iger. He actually wanted to run for president in 2016. Mm -hmm. And there was cord cutting. The social media age found its way in there. And they were trying to figure out how to stay relevant. What are we going to do? What's going to be our business model? So we are just infiltrating sports with leftist politics. Yeah. And I mean, so flash forward to 2015, the country, this was post Ferguson, Missouri, the entire country was very racially stirred up at the time. And on the campus of Mizzou, you started having all these problems of uh, students were saying, hey, uh, you know, people are saying the N word. They found a, allegedly found a poop swastika and they started to demand that the president of the university resign, even down to the football team said, hey, we're striking. We will not play a game until this, you know, the president of the university, Tim Wolf, resigns. That was gonna cost the school a million dollars a game. Yeah. So now you had, now you had the football team holding the school ransom, asking for somebody's head, asking for somebody to get fired. That's not sports. And that's the worst part too, is you have sports media members that aren't doing their job. They're terrified to be called racist mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out, well, like, these demands just have to be met. We have another racial divide, so we basically should just give it to them. In the same year, actually, you got Caitlyn Jenner got the Arthur Ashe Courage Award. Caitlyn Jenner has done absolutely nothing for sports. Bruce Jenner did something for sports. <laughs> so that's when they had this whole leftist ideologies thrown into sports that said, hey, everything needs to be politically motivated. We need to talk about sexual orientation and we need to talk about race continuously. And we need to make this the norm. I mean, what a jump in 12 years. You go from 2003, where ESPN is saying, hey, we don't want anything to be about politics. We're actually gonna fire Rush because we just want it to be about sports to now in 2015, they're giving awards that have nothing to do with sports whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just politics. Exactly, and then you see ESPN, how they treat conservatives. You have Kurt Schilling, what happened with him in 2016. He got fired because he shared a meme on his private Facebook account, his private account, just shared a meme about a transgender bathroom bill in North Carolina, and then you have Within that same year, you have Jamel Hill that shares a tweet that says, Trump and all his supporters are white supremacists. Strong. I mean, that is, that is really, really gutsy to go out there and say that. And ESPN had come out and said, we reprimanded Kurt Schilling multiple times. Jamel Hill, this was only her first offense. But that's not really what was going on. They were looking for a way to get rid of Kurt Schilling because he was a conservative. And I think the inflection point, though, is we're going to finish this off. Too. We're giving you that comprehensive history of how the left has just infiltrated sports. Colin Kaepernick. Mm. Everyone knows all about Colin Kaepernick. He broke NFL rules. Commissioner Roger Goodell allowed him to breach contract and the rest of the players to breach contract because they're supposed to stand up for the national anthem at that time. But why this was such an inflection point was it doesn't matter coach, player, or staff member you're making a political stance. Whether you're staying in the locker room, standing up, or kneeling, everyone is making a political stance. Coming up next, we talk about how the influx of woke identity politics in sports affects us now. I'm John Root, and this is Breakaway. Welcome back to Breakaway. We just gave you a comprehensive breakdown of how the left has just infiltrated sports. Now you're gonna tell you, what does this mean right now? So basically sports media members right now, it's just an influx of woke identity politics. Mm -hmm. And also it's not just players throwing this out there, it's the league as well. So I think we have to start with the Rooney rule. So many of these stories too, it's all about race, politics, sexual orientation, but in the NFL, the Rooney rule you need to give people a breakdown because you're getting rewarded for the color of people's skin instead of the content of their character and their skill set. Yeah, the Rooney Rule has been around for a little while, named after Dan Rooney, the you know late owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is what the Rooney Rule is. Basically, they want you, every time you need to hire a new head coach or general manager, the rule states you have to interview at least one minority candidate. Okay, whatever. But in the last couple years, they have been trying to change it where they're going, hey, let's incentivize people. So they're saying, if you end up hiring a minority candidate, instead of just interviewing them, they might give you extra draft capital for doing that. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold, hold up a second. Yep. You're now saying, we're going to bribe you with extra draft picks if you hire a minority. That is not 
uh, focusing on who is the best candidate. That is saying, hey, we are going to reward you based off of the color of somebody's skin. Color of somebody's skin should never be in the decision making at all. But also, you saw this in the Super Bowl too. If you watched the pregame show, it was all about race, sexual orientation, mm -hmm. gender. That's it. You had some of the best, maybe the best matchup in the history of the Super Bowl. You had the GOAT, Tom Brady, going against the kid that might be the next GOAT, Patrick Mahomes. All they talked about was the color of the coaches. So the Rooney rule was brought into there. Mm -hmm. And then also the color of the refs, gender. That's all that was talked about. It's such a double standard too, because I mean, yeah, hey, Carolina Panthers, why don't we give them extra draft capital because they're the only team that has, that starts a white running back. That's a minority there. Is that racist? Maybe, exactly. Mm. Don't do it. Don't focus on the color of people's skin in sports. We don't want that. America doesn't want that. So let's talk about the NBA All-Star Game in Charlotte. Oh my gosh. Sexual orientation, transgender bathroom bill. They decided we're not doing it in Charlotte. We're putting our foot down. Yeah, and they, they you know, pulled it from Charlotte. And that wasn't the only time we've seen that. Then just recently, we saw over the Georgia voting laws, they said, hey, Atlanta, sorry, a city that is predominantly black, we're gonna pull this and the $100 million that was projected to bring into the city, and we're gonna send the MLB All-Star Game to Denver. MLB teams bid for this for years. They want the MLB All-Star Game to come there because it helps their community. Yeah. And there is a predominantly black community there in Georgia, in Atlanta, and then you're going all the way to Denver, Colorado, where there's less than 10% black population there. And it's not like the, the Georgia voting bill was even something that was crazy restrictive. It was actually just common sense, mm -hmm. but because the narrative is, oh, this is racist, they pull it out and they hurt black people. They didn't help them. The reason for this show too, I don't feel like sports are lost. No. It used to be a unifier, it used to be an outlet away from politics and the craziness of life. But right now, it's such a bummer that we have to pick a political side as well as a side of whether it's just a matchup with two individual players or two teams. Like, I want to root for the A's. That's what I want yeah. to do. I want to watch an A's game, um, and I'm not going to root for the D-backs. I'm sorry. <laughs> but that's, like, okay, that's what we okay. should be deciding on. We should be rooting for a certain matchup. We should be rooting for a certain team. We shouldn't be rooting for a specific side. And it's no longer an outlet anymore. No, it's just we want as fans to be to be unified, for us to be able to just go sit down, watch a game, enjoy it. But they're really taking that away from us at this mm -hmm. point. I remember uh, an NFL game maybe two, three years ago. Ellen DeGeneres went with George W. Bush. And she, you know, put out, you know, on social media, put a video. God for forbid she hangs out with George W. Right, you know, oh, you know, yeah, exactly. Lord forbid a gay TV host sits down with a former conservative president. Wow, we can't do that apparently. Yep. Ever, everyone in the sports media went kind of after her and was like, why would you do this? Wait, can't we be friends and watch a game together even if we don't think the same, even if we don't vote the same in the ballot box? Why do they want us to be divided that way? So everything is about race, everything's about sexual orientation, everything's about politics. That's what they want you to think. Sports is no longer an outlet. That's the reason why we have a show like this. Mm -hmm. We need sports to be an outlet again. I want to be able to sit down with my friends that I know, you know what? We don't agree at the ballot box. Maybe we don't vote the same way. You know what? That's fine. I want to be able to sit down and be unified over something as simple as a ball going into a hoop. That might sound kind of dumb, but it really does do that. We can see each other as neighbors, as friends, um, basically just as Americans together through sports. And that's the reason why the left wants to infect sports with politics, is they want us divided because that's how they can conquer. And I think this is how we end it here. There's a few, few points. Talk about how this affects us now. Sports are the greatest meritocracy. Absolutely. It does not matter who your parents are, where you grew up, where you went to school. Can you get the job done? That's it. If you're a pro athlete or a college athlete, the best player gets the job. And most of the time, the best coach gets the job too. So we, we can talk about that, but sports are the greatest meritocracy. And that's what it should be about. Not the color of your skin, sexual orientation. It's about the content of your character and your skill set. And then you were just talking about too how sports bring us together. Think about the last time you went to a sports game. There might've been a walk off, there might've been a buzzer beater. Think about the person you hugged. Think about the person that you shook hands with. Think about the people you were cheering with. You probably had no idea how they voted, where they come from, it brings people together. I feel like sports can get back to that place too. Sports is a unifier. Sports was an outlet away from the craziness of politics. 
and life. And I feel like we can get to that place. And I think with a show like this, when we're giving you the facts, nobody likes a blowout. We've been blown out with leftist politics and woke identity politics in sports. No more. This is why we're here. And this is why we're breaking this stuff down. Coming up next for the first time ever, the 40 second shot clock. I'm gonna be in the hot seat. Brian's gonna ask me some questions. I'm John Root and this is Breakaway. This is the 40 second shot clock. I'm on the hot seat. Brian's got some questions for me. I need to answer before the buzzer hits. Brian, send it. Let's go. Favorite player of all time? Mike Vick. Favorite player right now? Steph Curry. Who are your favorite teams? Warriors, Sharks, A's, and Falcons. Uh, greatest sports movie of all time? Tough. Uh, remember the Titans. Which president in American history would be the best pro athlete? Gerald Ford. Okay. What's your hottest sports take? Barry Bonds does not belong in the Hall of Fame. You're wrong, go Devils. Top five NBA players ever. Uh, Kareem, uh, Magic, Bird, MJ, LeBron. And last, who wins in a basketball game, you or Charlie Kirk? Uh, I give Charlie five points. If we play at 11, I'll still win. Let's go. Well, that's all for today. I hope you had a great time. I know I had a great time with my boy, Brian. Thank you very much. Make sure you like, comment, and share this episode to keep the conversation going. You do not want to miss next week. We'll see you there.